Hi everyone, my name is Kayla, one of your professors here at English Without Borders, and I am so excited to bring you this content today. Last week, we worked on speaking English with more confidence. We evaluated through various exercise our internal relationship with English to better understand why we feel the way we feel, why we may be nervous or scared when speaking English. So now we are going to take this a step further in the next three videos that I have for you. Okay, so I'm really excited for this. Here we will learn how to apply our confidence in English. So now that we are better speaking with ourselves in English, and understanding how to analyze the way we communicate in English, now we can start to take baby steps forward in applying this sense of confidence to real life conversations. Now, this does take practice and we will do it little by little together, okay? I'm here to encourage you and help you thrive in your English language learning experience. So, let's get started. So now, what I am going to do is ask you three questions followed by a visualization exercise that will help you understand why it's actually very, very normal and everyone experiences at some point a fear of speaking in front of others when speaking their second language or their non-native language, in this case, English. Now, these questions are not always easy to answer but they are necessary to ask ourselves so that we can improve and get over our fears. Okay, so with that, I ask you, have you ever felt intimidated in front of other people? Thank you. Have you ever felt ridiculous or embarrassed in front of other people? Thank you. And have you ever felt scared or afraid to try something new? Thank you. Me too. If you are a normal human being, which you all are, you have experienced all of these feelings and all of these emotions at some point in your life. So I now would like to invite you to participate in a short visualization exercise with me. This will help you to understand why you have a deep-seated fear or nervousness or sense of intimidation when speaking to other people out loud in a new environment or in your new language. So the visualization exercise. I invite you to think about a childhood memory. I want you to imagine or relive a childhood memory where you have felt embarrassed, intimidated, or ridiculous in front of other people. Now, this could be a variety of situations. It could be that when you were eight years old, you were called on in class by the professor. He asked you to write the answer to a question on the board and you got the answer wrong or maybe you just didn't know, or maybe no one agreed with you. Maybe the class laughed at you. Maybe the professor made you feel bad, made you feel unintelligent. Relive that experience. Maybe it was with a sports team. Maybe you loved playing football or rugby and one of your teammates or your coach yelled at you for something you did wrong or gave you some criticism that was just a little too difficult to hear. How did that make you feel? I want you to relive that moment, relive those experiences. What did the air smell like? What feeling did you have in your chest? What did you say in response? Now, the feelings that you had or experienced during this difficult childhood memory, are they similar to the feelings that you experience when you have to do something new? When you have to speak in public? 
when you have to use your non-native language to introduce yourself and talk about yourself. Now, the feeling might not be exactly the same as those strong feelings when you were a child, but is it similar? Does it remind you of what it was like? Now, the first step in controlling these negative emotions is understanding why we have them on a deep-seated, deep-rooted level. So this is something that actually happens to 100% of adults. So please know that you are not alone in this, okay? In fact, even though it seems that it is not logical that a memory from our childhood would affect us when we are adults, it actually happens on a day-to-day -day basis. And there is a very clear reasoning behind it. Now I'm going to give you a list of three reasons as to why you are reliving or experiencing those feelings of embarrassment, ridiculousness, or perhaps shame and nervousness when you want to speak in front of other people. So number one, our brain and our subconscious wants to protect us from negative feelings. So when we feel embarrassed, when we feel ridiculous in front of other people, when we feel intimidated, our brain wants to keep us from having that experience later on. So if we jump into a new situation and we feel that the situation is similar to that situation years ago, when we experienced an embarrassing feeling or we were intimidated, our brain wants to protect us and it tells us to leave that situation. And this is something we are programmed to do. Our brain just wants to help us. So our natural instinct is to leave, is to avoid that situation that could recreate that same feeling. Number two, we are programmed to not like rejection. Okay, we do not like rejection as human beings. We are social animals. And our social behavior means that we survive together when we are in groups, when we are with friends, when we are with family. If we are alone, we lose that sense of survival. We don't like to be alone as human beings. So we do not want to be rejected by our social groups because that means that we can't survive, okay? Without our support systems, without our loved ones, our family and our friends, we have nothing. So what does that mean? It means we are terrified of rejection. We don't want the people that are closest to us to reject us, or we don't want our new social group to say we aren't good enough. So we get scared. So that's reason number two. Now, reason number three, we are afraid of being wrong. Now, ever since the beginning of our education, and most education systems have this flaw, is that we experience in our education that we are constantly punished or shamed when we get the answer wrong. However, when we get the answer right, we are rewarded. People tell us how smart we are, how good we are, how bright we are, how clever we are. And when we get it wrong, we are made to feel unintelligent. Maybe people laugh at you. Maybe they call you stupid. And we don't want that. So we create inside of us this fear of making a mistake. When making mistakes is the only way to get better and to grow. But we don't want to be reprimanded. We don't want to be punished. So we take this feeling and we apply it not only to uh, our education, but to our social interactions as we grow older to our relationships, to a new job, to a new interview, we are terrified of saying the wrong answer. So instead of saying the wrong answer, we prefer to be quiet and not say anything at all. So these three reasons are reasons as to why your brain on a scientific neuronal level does not want you to feel embarrassed, rejected, or have negative emotions. So now you understand why. Now that we understand the why, we have to take the next step forward. What are you going to do with it? Now I would like to say, if you have made it this far in this video, 
congratulations, because that means you are one of the very few people in this world that wants to take your English fluency seriously and get to the next level. Most people never overcome these deep-seated emotions or fears, but you have decided to be here to break the chains, to get better, and to take yourself to that next level. You are committed, so thank you for being here. Now what we are going to do is with our visualization exercise, I want you to tell yourself that story in a mirror or even better, if you can, record a video of yourself. I want you to tell yourself this story 100% in English, describing in detail all of the emotions, the feelings, the experiences of what it was like to live that embarrassing childhood memory being in your shoes. Describe to yourself what it was like. If you are brave enough to tell this story to a family member or a friend of yours that speaks English, even better. That will help you get one step closer to overcoming those negative emotions that you have within you. So what we do when we tell ourselves the story and in English is we are making those new connections in our brain with our non-native language. So we are going to acknowledge those feelings that have stayed with us from our childhood memory. We're going to acknowledge them. We're going to accept them. And then we're going to release them by telling this story. So this is a really, really big step for you. Now, it may not be easy, but I want you to take your time, really do it well, and watch yourself back afterwards. Listen to yourself speak, and you will see how you are learning to express those emotions and release them through using the English language, which is a really big step. So once again, I'm gonna keep saying it, congratulations for being here because you're doing a great job. So I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Go ahead and do this exercise and let me know in the comments below how it impacted you. And I'll see you next time. Happy learning.